So we're here today with uh, Jorge Martin, uh, the from the editorial board of the In Defense of Marxism website, Marxist.com, uh, to talk about the situation uh, as it as, is, as it is developing in the Ukraine. So can you tell us a little about the the latest developments in, in the Ukraine? Yes, as you know, there were the referendums on the 11th of uh, May in uh, Donetsk and uh, Luhansk. And a big majority of uh, people express the the will to be independent or to have some sort of self uh, determination. Now, uh, over the last uh, few weeks, the, this this is the final result of a strong movement that's lasted for many weeks of opposition to the Kiev uh, authorities that came to power after the overthrow of uh, former President uh, Yanukovych. And uh, what's been happening since is that Kiev has responded in a, an increasingly aggressive manner against these protests uh, by, by uh, launching what they term an anti-terrorist operation. But the truth is that uh, this anti-terrorist operation has failed on all accounts. They've launched three waves of this anti-terrorist operation. They, managed, they haven't managed to recover one single major urban center that is in the hands of the opposition, the rebels. Uh, and, and this shows many different things. It shows, on the one hand, that uh, the rebels have mass popular support. It might be that uh, only uh, a small number of people are actively involved in the armed actions of the rebels, but they clearly have uh, support from the population uh, at large, passive or, or, or active support. And it is also clear that the anti-terrorist operation of Kiev, i.e. the sending of the army, Ministry of Interior troops, National Guard and other troops against its own uh, population has backfired and has pushed people in the southeast, particularly in Donetsk and uh, Luhansk, further away from the Kiev authorities. As many people interviewed by Western journalists, they were saying that we, we were not necessarily in favor of independence uh, before, but now after seeing what they've done, we, we are in favor. And you've seen wave after wave of this anti-terrorist operation where uh, Ukrainian army troops and Ministry of Interior troops were surrounded by unarmed civilians and there was fraternization and the soldiers refused to fire. This is what the real situation, uh, what the real situation on the ground uh, is. What is the future for these uh, republics that have been declared? It's difficult to say. Contrary to what the Western media and governments have been saying, uh, Putin does not want to take over these two regions. It is one thing to take over Crimea, where there was an important uh, naval military base for Russia and is a point of uh, strategic importance, uh, where there was an uh, overwhelming majority of the population in favor of joining with uh, Russia. Uh, taking over the Donetsk and Luhansk will be a completely different uh, issue, which will mean uh, bringing into Russia a uh, uh, heavily in industrialized region, which will probably need uh, restructuring, in inverted commas, i.e. massive uh, layoffs and uh, massive investment in order to modernize these industries. And also at this point it will mean bringing into Russia a uh, restive and rebellious uh, population where the working class is taking more and more, uh, uh, playing more and more a role mm -hmm. in organizing in these uh, two regions. Can you explain a bit about uh, about the <coughs> the latest developments in these two regions and exactly this this thing that you say about the working class uh, intervening in a, uh, on a larger scale? Yes, at the end of uh, April and beginning of May, we saw uh, growing uh, indications of a move on the part of, of different groups of workers to participate in the movement uh, uh, in, an, uh, uh, in a way, in an organized uh, way. There was, first of all, the strike of the miners at, the Kras at Krasnodon, in the Krasnodon Ugol uh, mine, which is owned by Rinat Akhmetov, the richest man in uh, Ukraine and oligarch which is based who is based in this uh, region and this strike <coughs> started the, the spark of the strike was uh, demand for higher wages they wanted a 50% wage increase but also they were demanding uh, the freedom of political activity i.e. some miners who had participated in pro-referendum demonstrations in Luhansk they have been sacked or threatened with dismissal and so on. Mm -hmm. Losing your job in any of these regions is a very uh, important thing. It means mm -hmm. you, you become uh, poor. 
and so this uh, was also one of the demands. So it was also the demand for political for mm -hmm. fr freedom of political activity. There was also, there was also one second. There was also another movement in a town called Vienna Kievo in uh, Donetsk. Uh, this is a town of maybe 120,000 people, industrial uh, town in Donetsk, and uh, here miners and steel workers came out and occupied uh, the buildings of the steel uh, works. They occupied the mines. And this was uh, also demanding the freedom of political activity. Amongst other things, they demanded that uh, miners and steel workers who had were, who will be allowed to join the Donbass People's Militia without fear of uh, reprisals. Mm -hmm. This was, was a big movement. It only lasted for a few days, and it seems to have receded now. But it showed uh, the entry of the working class in the in the mm -hmm. movement. Now, over the past uh, week, uh, uh, this. This situation, this development within the working class, has reflected itself with, uh, uh, has developed into the taking up of these demands of uh, nationalizations uh, uh, and so on in these in these new formed so-called people's republics. But uh, can you explain a bit about about how that has uh, developed and what, what the latest developments are? There? Yes, it is clear that the rebellion in the southeast and particularly in Donetsk and Luhansk is, is a combination of uh, democratic demands and national demands, i.e. the right to uh, speak, the, the right for the Russian language to be recognized as an official language, the right of uh, use, the usage of uh, Russian in education and other things like this. Also, there's local democracy demands, say the right of the population in these regions, in each one of the regions, to elect their own governors, who up until now have been appointed by Kiev. Mm -hmm. And the new Kiev uh, government, the interim government of uh, Yatsenyuk, has appointed as governors of all these regions uh, known oligarchs who are hated in the region. The governor of uh, Nyepetrovsk is uh, Kolomoisky known uh, oligarch, the governor of uh, Donetsk was appointed, uh, is uh, Taruta, another uh, uh, oligarch, and, and so on. And so this uh, is a justified uh, democratic and national uh, democratic demands, but also reflects a deeper uh, social and economic demands. I, most of the workers in these regions, they understand that if uh, Ukraine signs the accession, uh, the, 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 the free trade treaty with the uh, European Union, uh, and the uh, memorandum is already signed with the IMF for a bailout uh, loan, it means the destruction of the industries. It means uh, closing down of many of these industries, which are considered not to be uh, viable. And so they are defending also the economic, and, uh, the economic rights. This you could see in the original Declaration of Sovereignty of the Donetsk Republic, which was passed at the beginning of uh, April. There were references to this. For instance, it included a reference to collective uh, ownership, i.e. state ownership, being above other forms of ownership. There was also a reference to uh, being against the exploitation of uh, labor and so on. Although it has to be said that in the most recent constitution of the Donetsk Republic that was published a couple of days ago, has not been voted by anyone, as far as I can see. This uh, demands are, are eliminated from it. And this is a very conservative, reactionary uh, constitution that they are putting forward now. Uh, for instance, it includes uh, the Orthodox Church as being the state faith. It bans uh, same-sex marriages. Uh, but above all, <coughs> it considers all different forms of property, this property at the same level, it recognizes private property of the means of production and so on. So it's a step backward. But at the same time, there, there is a, this is a contradictory movement. For instance, uh, Ponomarev, the mayor of the People's Mayor of Sloviansk, one of the cities that has resisted the anti-terrorist uh, offensive of Kiev, declared a few days uh, ago that uh, all property will be nationalized, that there will be nationalization of all uh, industries in the city, that the indus these industries could then be left in the hands of unscrupulous uh, businessmen. He already nationalized the, c the city's central market on May Day. So it's clear that uh, there is a push in that direction that comes uh, both from a uh, strong anti-oligarchic mood, which exists throughout Ukraine, not only in the east and, and in the south, but throughout Ukraine. Ukraine. These are the people who uh, robbed the country for 20 years since mm -hmm. the, the restoration of capitalism, and they were really hated. 
But it also comes from a practical point of view because most of the oligarchs have sided with Kiev, so so therefore they are against the Donetsk Republic, and this is pushing the Donetsk Republic to retaliate against these uh, oligarchs. The latest example we've seen today, in the last two or three days, Akhmetov, Rinat Akhmetov, the richest man in uh, in uh, the Ukraine, an, an oligarch who's, who is based in this region. Where, where his companies employ 300,000 people, mostly industrial workers, miners, steel workers, and so on. He has said that he is starting a movement for the Donbass to remain, the Donbass, i.e. these two regions, the Donetsk uh, Basin, for these two regions to remain part of Ukraine. Uh, and he started to mobilize, he threatened to organize a demonstration in Mariup Mariupol uh, a couple of days ago, which was then cancelled. And today he was supposed to have called a general strike of his uh, workers and a demonstration in uh, Donetsk, which seems not to have materialized. But in any case, he's taking a very strong stance of mobilizing he, the workforce in his factories against the Donetsk uh, Republic and in order to maintain uh, unity of uh, Ukraine. And this is obviously being considered as a provocation by the Donetsk Republic. And um, the, the president of the Donetsk Republic this uh, morning, Denis Pushilin, uh, at lunchtime today has announced that this is a declaration of war, the fact that the oligarchs have refused to pay tax to the Donetsk Republic and that they are going to proceed to nationalize the properties of the oligarchs, which uh, whatever the reason might be for this is obviously a positive uh, step uh, forward from any point of view. Mm -hmm. How has is, how is the, the, the reaction of the Kiev government been in response to all, all of this? Well, uh, the, the, since the anti-terrorist uh, operation started against uh, Slovyansk and Donetsk, Luhansk and so on, uh, the government has moved very quickly towards an extreme nationalistic uh, position. And because also the regular army and the state apparatus, the police, the Ministry of Interior Forces and so on, cannot be relied upon to carry out this war against the uh, Ukrainian population in the south and in the east, They've had to rely increasingly on the fascist uh, elements, fascist and Nazi elements, paramilitary fascist gangs, which have been incorporated into the state apparatus <coughs> in two different ways. Some of them have joined units created directly by the Ministry of Interior, like for instance the Azov Battalion of the Ministry of the Interior, which is mainly composed of people from um, far-right Nazi organizations like the Social Nationalist Assembly, uh, the 14th uh, century, Centuria, the uh, Brotherhood, Patriots of Ukraine, and they go with the Nazi symbols, they join the volunteer for these uh, units and they are sent to fight in the front. And they are carrying out the most uh, vicious uh, attacks, you know, for instance in Mariupol where they uh, fired on unarmed civilians, Krans Krasno uh, Armeisk, where another unit, the, the Nieper battalion, fired <coughs> on unarmed civilians, killed two people. These people have no uh, qualms. These, these are fascist uh, thugs. They have no problem in firing uh, upon unarmed population, which they consider to be the enemy. Uh, and so this is a very dangerous uh, development that has taken place, which has been accompanied by a curta curtailing democratic rights. Uh, offices of the Communist Party have been closed down, ransacked throughout the country, left-wing organizations like Borodba, an organization called The Struggle, which is a Marxist organization, uh, which was strong in Odessa and uh, Kharkiv, they've uh, had to go underground. The members have been prosecuted, the offices uh, ransacked by uh, military police without an, an, any identification, without any search warrant. The leaders have left the country. Uh, and more recently, uh, there's been an assault on the Communist uh, Party. The, minister, the acting prime minister, acting president Turchinov has uh, opened proceedings, has started proceedings to ban the Communist uh, Party. Communist Party leader Simonenko was attacked in uh, Parliament and he, then he went into a TV, TV debate because he's a presidential candidate and he was... Uh, the, the fascist thugs were waiting for him outside, they attacked his car with baseball bats and uh, Molotov cocktails. Basically, any vestige, vestiges of the democracy that might have existed are now being eliminated because this is a civil war. And in a civil war, anyone who's not with the government is the enemy and is an agent of foreign uh, power. This is the language that's being used. 
just to give you two examples, this uh, member of parliament for Svoboda, the far-right party, Freedom, which is part of the government, he spoke uh, the other day in parliament and he said that, uh, from his point of view, the solution was uh, that uh, the people in Slovyansk should be given 48 hours to evacuate. Anyone who remains behind is an enemy. And uh, then, then after that, the army should uh, bomb uh, Slovyansk with heavy artillery, with uh, uh, helicopter gunfire, and raise the whole city to the ground until it's a lunar landscape, his words. This is the kind of type, this is the type and this is not from extreme elements outside of the government. <laughs> this is a party, Svoboda, which is part of the government. They have controlled several ministries. They have the state prosecutor, is a member of Svoboda, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the second example is Yarosh. This is the leader of uh, the right sector, presidential candidate. His men in his organization are now part of the Ministry of the Interior Forces fighting in the East. And he also said that, in his opinion, uh, the only solution for the situation in the Southeast was a uh, counter guerrilla operation, where the leaders of these uh, republics and the leaders of the Slovian People's Council should be taken out, i.e., assassinated. This is the, the position that's being put forward. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of a competition to see who's the most extreme. Uh, Paruvi, who's the secretary of the National Council for Defense and Security, is a former member of a Nazi party and he is extreme right-wing nationalist. Uh, Oleg Lyashko is an extreme right-wing uh, member of parliament, he's also a presidential candidate and he's taken it upon himself in the last few days, he's, he's walking around the country dressed in uh, black military fatigues, participating in the, the anti-terrorist operations and uh, whipping, out, uh, whipping up nationalist uh, hysteria. Mm -hmm. This is this is a climate of white uh, terror where no, no left wing organizations, or never mind left wing, no organizations that do n that do not agree with the government are allowed to operate. So uh, uh, lately, there's also been talks about negotiations between Russia and the West about this. Is what do you think this represents, and what are the perspectives for these negotiations? Yes, in my opinion, as I said before, <coughs> Putin is not necessarily interested in taking over these two regions, Donetsk and uh, Luhansk. It will create a bigger headache for him than, uh, than it's worth. Uh, and at the same time, the United States is putting more pressure. And they are pushing the government to try to solve this issue because you, re you realize that on Sunday there are presidential elections uh, which are already been discredited, but in large parts of the country there will not be any voting. So they need to regain control of these regions. But the position of the German capitalists is a bit different because you see uh, the United States has no trade with Ukraine or Russia or almost no trade is negligible. So they can talk about imposing uh, sanctions while uh, German uh, businesses and French businesses are closely related to the uh, Russian economy and to the Ukraine economy. They have invested for many years in uh, Russia, in gas, in natural resources, in uh, the selling machine tools, and lots of uh, there's a lots of trade, and also Germany is heavily dependent on gas imports from uh, Russia, which go via the Ukraine. So uh, in the last few days, we have seen many statements of prominent capitalists in Germany from main companies Bayer, Bas, Volkswagen, and so on, saying that they are not in favor of sanctions against uh, Russia. And it seems clear to me that both Putin and uh, Merkel are trying to reach some sort of negotiated uh, solution in which uh, perhaps there are talks between the rebels and Kiev sponsored by uh, these two countries. Uh, Putin yesterday and today has made an announcement that troops are, were being withdrawn from the border and it seems, it seems that even Western journalists are admitting that this is the case. Uh, some some talks leading towards federalization of the country, are you giving autonomy to these regions, which will then allow Russia to have a say uh, deciding, uh, uh, in deciding uh, over Ukrainian matters, uh, will not be left, uh, left out completely, as, as is the case with the current government. It's not ruled out that the main presidential candidate, the candidate presidential candidate, who is at the top of the opinion polls, Poroshenko, he might be in favor of such a solution. He is an oligarch, uh, but he also probably understands that you can't really rule a country when half of the population is against you. 
and uh, you can't really make business in a situation of civil war so he might be interested in trying to pacify the situation on this ba on these grounds however whether they will succeed or not is a different matter because there are forces they have unleashed which they're not necessarily under their own control in uh, Donetsk and Luhansk people are getting increasingly angry with uh, Russia because they said look we appealed for, uh, to Russia for help they haven't helped us uh, the anti-terrorist operation is continuing they we're not receiving guns from uh, Russia Russia is not uh, coming in to help us which is what they might have uh, thought will happen so they're getting increasingly angry with uh, Russia while at the same time on the other hand there's all these uh, fascist and Nazi elements who will not uh, be in favor of negotiating with uh, rebels whom they consider terrorist agents of foreign states separatists and people to be killed uh, so it is a very dangerous situation that they've uh, started. And uh, finally, uh, what do you think would be uh, the mm. tasks of uh, Marxists and revolutionaries in, Ukra in the Ukraine or uh, and internationally? Well, first of all, we must oppose imperialist intervention in the, in the Ukraine. And imperialist intervention by the United States and uh, Europe. They've been meddling into the affairs of, uh, of uh, Russia. Uh, the United States government is being egging on the uh, Ukrainian uh, government to take on this anti-terrorist operation, uh, a, a civil war against its own uh, population. We need to denounce them. And it's quite clear that uh, this whole business of uh, removing Yanukovych and uh, moving NATO borders closer to Russia is a clear provocation against Russia. And they knew that Russia had to uh, reply. It's, it's playing with uh, fire. Second, we need to uh, demand that uh, that the Western governments uh, break links with this uh, government in Kiev, the government that is uh, has no legit legitimacy, and is composed of openly fascist uh, elements, is curtailing democratic uh, rights, and sh shouldn't have anything to do with this. Uh, also, we need to organize a solidarity with those who are fighting this uh, government, with the anti-fascist uh, resistance, with all these organizations that have been forced underground, like Borodba organizations that might be illegalized in the next period like the communist party we must defend the basic democratic uh, rights and basic democratic rights also involve the right of the people in uh, these uh, regions in the east to self-determination meaning the right that the democratic rights should be respected that the national rights should be respected and uh, but above all we need to also put forward a socialist point of view you know i mean uh, you it, this this whole crisis in ukraine at uh, its root is the, the, the economic disaster of capitalist uh, restoration for the last 20 years with different gangs of uh, oligarchs have been looting the country be these gangs pro-Russian or pro-European and uh, we need to demand first of all uh, the, the expropriation of the oligarchs this is the, the basis for any democratic solution to the problem in the Ukraine we also must warn that there should be no illusion that uh, Russia <coughs> is a progressive regime defending the interests of working people in Ukraine. It is not. It's a reactionary capitalist uh, regime. And there are Russian nationalist elements in this uh, movement which are very dangerous but uh, and will need to be combated. Uh, but the difference is the uh, Maidan movement and the uh, rebellion in the southeast is that the, in, in the Maidan you could not go and defend any left-wing ideas openly and uh, you could not go with uh, socialist banners or socialist slogans you, you will be beaten up by the fascists who dominated politically and physically the, the movement in the southeast you can you are allowed to defend these ideas and in fact these ideas form part of the general uh, mood of the population against the oligarchs against capitalism and uh, there's an opportunity to, to defend them. Uh, so this is what uh, Marxist revolutionaries need to advocate. Down with the Kiev uh, government, which is a government is waging war against its own uh, population, is curtailing democratic rights and is forcing left-wing organizations into the underground. Solidarity with those who are fighting the Kiev uh, government and an end to imperialist intervention in uh, Ukraine. Thank you very much to Jorge Martin. Uh, for more information about the Ukraine uh, and for a Marxist analysis, you can visit www.marxist.com in defense of Marxism website. Thank you.